Hey everyone, so Microsoft doubled down on its true 4K marketing for Xbox One X at E3, but it's fair to say that it didn't really do enough to justify those claims. So on the one hand, we have Forza Motorsport 7 looking incredible at native resolution, but beyond that, well, Super Lucky's Tale, yeah, it's a nice game, but hardly a triple A showcase. Meanwhile, Anthem and Assassin's Creed Origins use checkerboard rendering to get to 2160p. They look great in motion, but it's not native resolution. It's not true 4K. I'm fairly confident that we'll get to see more native titles. After all, Monolith has confirmed Shadow of War as a full Ultra HD title, and we should expect the majority of Microsoft's announced games like Forza Horizon 3, Halo Wars 2, and Gears of War 4 to hit at full fat 4K. And yes, we should see enhancements to visual fidelity too. There's a rule of thumb that Microsoft works to internally. You should expect to see a baseline 4X increase to resolution moving from base Xbox One to the X. And that's borne out not just by its E3 showing, but also by its internal benchmarks, which I have seen. Okay, so here's the thing. My visit to Microsoft was actually sandwiched between two developer briefings, one in the UK before I flew out and the other on the same week in the US. Having consulted developer sources, it's interesting to compare what I saw with what they were showing. I saw a ton of stuff they didn't, including the Forza Tech demo, but the game makers got something else, a fat pile of GPU benchmarks. Took a bit of digging and subsequent verification, but I now have that data too, and it's fascinating. So let's talk about the games they benched. Nine in total, but no names. Simply the genre, the resolution, and the target performance level, engine type, graphics API, and well, whether the title is out or not. It's not much to go on, but yeah, we can make some fairly educated guesses here. Title B, well, there's only one in development DX12 1080p60 racing game that I'm aware of. Forza Motorsport 7. Similarly, Title C, well, how many DX12 Unreal Engine 4 based linear shooters are there on Xbox One? Well, one, as far as I know, Gears of War 4. And again, there's only one DX12 based first person shooter targeting 720p at 60 frames per second on base Xbox One hardware. That'll be Star Wars Battlefront. Beyond that, we move into the realms of guesswork. Title G? Well, possibly Halo Wars 2. Title A? Maybe Recall? The point is that it's all about the benchmarks, not really the games themselves. First up, let's talk about what we're actually comparing here. The data is based on GPU frame time captures from PIX, Microsoft's performance analysis tool. Sample section of a game is profiled on the base Xbox One, then it undergoes the most rudimentary Xbox One X port, with resolution ramped up to 4K. None of the new hardware's additional features are used and performance may actually be handicapped by no effective ESRAM porting process. It's just mapped into GDDR5 and so there may be lots of unnecessary read writes between different areas of RAM. The data we have also exists out of gameplay, so stuff like 30 FPS or 60 FPS caps is irrelevant. So let's begin by taking a look at title B, which is almost certainly Forza 7. 13 millisecond render time on Xbox One here at 1080p, which uncapped translates to something like 77 frames per second. 4K on the X, 11 milliseconds, or 91 frames per second if you prefer. Now Forza actually has a 16.7 millisecond target frame time. It's a 60 FPS game, right? Meaning that the GPU is using just 65% of its power. As we previously explained in our Turn 10 Scorpio video, that's extra processing power that can be used for additional visual upgrades. And it will be fascinating to see what they actually are. Thus far, we've not seen anything of the game running on base hardware, only the early Xbox One X code. Title C then, likely Gears of War 4. Interesting stuff here, a 28 millisecond render time at 1080p on base hardware translates to 26 milliseconds, a 7% improvement. Now that's not bad, but nothing like as impressive as Forza. However, this does demonstrate that early benchmarks may actually be underestimating the real life result on the X. After all, we know that the final game features higher resolution textures, higher polygon counts, enhanced draw distances, upgraded dynamic shadows, and improved reflections. I'd be willing to bet that this sucks up much more than the limited overhead that the benchmark suggests here. Suffice to say though that in all of the tests, all of Microsoft's 1080p titles perform better even with the bare bones ports to 4K on the X. 
but it's the sub-native games that could prove more fascinating. Title A, which, well, maybe recall, well, that's slower running at 4K, but it's not so much slower than we would have envisaged, only about 5%. It's hard to believe that further optimization couldn't get it to the right target. Similarly, Title E is another 900p game that's about 6% slower running at 4K on the Xbox One X compared to 1080p on base hardware. Now, the outlier here is Title D, an open world World adventure game that's well off the pace. Frame times are about 24% slower at 4K compared to base hardware running at 900p. Now this is possibly a coincidence of course, but Assassin's Creed is an open world adventure that's typically used a 900p engine. That hit 2160p on Xbox One X at E3, but it used dynamic resolution scaling and checkerboarding to get there. Finally, 720p game Star Wars Battlefront, which must surely be Title H. Now, expecting native resolution to work on Xbox One X is asking a bit too much here. We're looking at a nine times increase in pixel count. Render time at 4K increases by 56%, so you're looking at a 60 hertz title that's running at just 38 frames per second here. That's not particularly impressive, so it's no surprise that we got to see Anthem hitting 2160p at E3 by using checkerboarding. BioWare's latest is a 30Hz game, but it is using the same engine. So initial results there give us some idea of how Frostbite scales between Xbox One and the X. I'd be surprised to see the first Battlefront get an Xbox One X patch, but its sequel? Well, that launches this year, and I'm expecting an evolution of DICE's work on Battlefield 1 on PS4 Pro. Hitting 60 frames per second isn't easy, so dynamic resolution and checkerboarding may well be the way forward there. So that kind of wraps up the 4K scaling benchmarks that Microsoft provided to developers. And I'll stress again that these are the most bare bones ports that were tested here with Gears of War 4's real life performance months after these benchmarks were taken, showing a much bigger improvement considering uh, the limited gains we saw there. But based on the documentation I've seen, Microsoft's key advice to developers is to expect a 4X resolution boost as a baseline with 8X anisotropic filtering and high-end PC settings in place. Oh, and obviously uh, they advise to make good use of the extra memory and to consider dynamic scaling and checkerboarding to get you to 2160p if, like Title D, the engine just doesn't scale so well. But that's not actually the end of the metrics that Microsoft presented. They also talked about back compat with older Xbox One titles, which splits into two categories games compiled using older Xbox One development environments, and uh, the secondly, newer titles which are based on the new XDK. Okay, so let's talk about the latter first. I mean, even if a developer doesn't target Xbox One X at all, if the game is run on the new XDK, it automatically taps into all of the power of the new system. So the boosts to performance here, again, just benchmarked here on a bare bones port, are huge. But remember that we're far more likely to be constrained by frame rate limits, CPU overhead and the like. What's perhaps more interesting are the older titles, which are compiled on legacy XDKs. Now, I learned something interesting and new here, that pixel and vertex shaders are hived off to 20 compute units apiece, while half the render backends are disabled. So yeah, performance in comparison is lower. Anything from plus 30% there on title A compared to base Xbox One, all the way up to plus 100% on the likes of title D or C. Effectively, it's like running older games on the equivalent of something like a three teraflop Xbox One. This is almost certainly enough to max out games using dynamic resolution and to massively increase texture filtering quality, the enhancements that Microsoft has promised. You'll also get the full force of the CPU upgrade, of course, plus the RAM disk functionality using leftover memory, and of course, faster loading times in general. So yeah, interesting stuff. Of course, Just Cause 3 and Project Cars will remain our go-to games for testing boost mode style enhancements and the like. But also Halo 5 should prove fascinating in testing improvements in dynamic resolution scaling. But it's also worth noting that Microsoft is suggesting to developers that they might consider submitting any title updates for their games on the new XDK 
in order to automatically gain access to the full power of the Xbox One X hardware. Overall though, this is a fascinating insight into the behind the scenes processes at Microsoft. And it's the first and probably only raw benchmarks we're going to get. Just remember that the data is a few months old and whether we're talking about PC graphics cards or console performance, pure benchmarks are only really good for like for like comparisons. They don't define the gameplay experience. For that, yeah, we kind of need to see more games. Anyway, that's all from me for now. I hope you found this video useful and insightful. Do like, subscribe and follow us on Twitter for all the latest Digital Foundry updates. And of course, please consider supporting the Digital Foundry Patreon, where you can gain access to pristine video downloads of all of our work and some extra treats too. But for now, from me, thanks for watching.